Shares in Crown have rocketed today, as I mentioned, after private equity giant Blackstone lobbed its third takeover bid on the table. Business editor Ross Greenwood joins us. Ross, is this bid going to succeed? This is the last try, isn't it? Well, you'd think Last so. One of the dice, I should say. I was going to say one, two and three. You've had three goes at it. You'd think eventually you might get there. So this is the largest shareholder in Crown. So this is Blackstone, giant private equity play around the world. Um, and it's not the only group, of course, that's bid. Remember that Wynn Resorts from Las Vegas, um, it had a go at it very early on. Uh, and the reason for this is because it seems as though everybody understands that James Packer's 37% stake is in play. Um, and so as a result, right now, this takeover bid today saw the Crown share price, you know, really rocket. And uh, the reason for it was the Crown has been languishing with uh, questions about its uh, licences. And, of course, there's been a delay to it receiving a licence in New South Wales to be able to start gaming there. There's a Royal Commission on in Western Australia. The results of Victoria is down. It's held on to the licence there. The gaming is back. But this is what Crown shares did today, up by $1.64, $11.54. That's 16.6%. But even the astute person and can see that the takeover bid here is $12.50. Um, and so there's almost another dollar on the plate if this bid were to succeed. So it's just going to be fascinating to see or how this actually transpires over the coming weeks. And bearing in mind that also Star had been there and had bid $12.50, the same as this bidding price right now from Blackstone, to try and take Crown over. It's so frustrating getting all this news. We always just get it a day late. Some of that information would have been bloody good yesterday morning. It would have been about... called inside information, by exactly. the way. That's exactly what it would have exactly. been called. Indeed. <laughs> Tell us about uh, James Packer's role in this. I mean, he, he has to, he's committed to sell down, isn't he? So everybody knows this stuff has to be sold. Is there a, is there a deadline on that that the market's going to work to? Well, there's actually a deadline, but it's also a confusing deadline. So what happened was that, uh, first of all, the ILGA inquiry from New South Wales and the recommendation to government suggested that he should sell down from the 37% stake to 5%. But then after negotiation, not only was that raised to 10%, but then also then suggested that they might have given him, given him more time to eventually come down. Now, it's said it's even four years' time, but then the Victorian Royal Commission handed down its report. It was 5%. Um, and there is a, a tight deadline on that within the next three to four years. So here, there's not much wriggle room here for James Packer. If, you know, he is to follow the orders of the government, and they are orders, um, then ultimately these stakes have to be sold. Opportunists will jump in, there's no doubt. James Packer still probably has time to assess whether he's likely to get a bigger bid in the future. Right now, in the financial sector, the Commonwealth Bank uh, smashed this week. What's, uh, what's behind all that? All right, so the Commonwealth Bank shares were hammered this week and the reason for that was largely it reported in quarterly earnings results that its margins were being squeezed. Now, the interesting other thing that happened at the same time was that um, the Commonwealth Bank also announced it's made an investment in the Winklevoss twins' business in the United States called Gemini, which is actually a, um, a, a, a cryptocurrency trading business which a, a, the Commonwealth Bank is going to offer to its customers. So you can see here what happened to the Commonwealth Bank. They're down 9.3% this week, which is massive for a bank as big as the Commonwealth Bank, under $100. Today, they clawed back just a little bit, up by 0.6 of a percent to, uh, or 57 cents. They'll probably be hoping for a better week over the coming weeks or so, I'd suggest, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you and I have talked a bit about energy policy. There's a long way to go on on so many fronts when it comes to energy policy. But you've got a fascinating interview coming up on, on Sunday that delves into all of that. Well, we really do. Trevor and Baker is one of the most interesting people when it comes to talk to energy in Australia. The reason is he came originally out of the Energy Commissions or the Electricity Commissions of New South Wales and Queensland, then went on to forge an entrepreneurial business of his own. Oh, the brilliant deal that he did, which was back in 2015, was to buy the Vales Point uh, coal-fired power station from the New South Wales government for $1 million dollars and just four years later, it was valued at more than $700 million. Get that for a good deal for government. Anyway, so he's now become a massive investor in all sorts of alternative energy areas. But when I've sat down and had a, a chat to him, one of those businesses, I should say, is said to be one of the best electric vehicle charging businesses in the world called Tritium, which is about to list on the Nasdaq exchange in the US for $2 billion. Anyway, I sat and had a long chat to him about the future of energy. And of course, one of those that you and I have spoken about is nuclear. Nuclear is going to be part of the world's 
um, zero emission baseload power. And, and, and in my view, it has to be part in today, but it's not today's decision. Today's decision is to, is to, um, is to establish how we can best accommodate and grow renewables that is operating. So, Chris, what I think is that Trevison Baker is truly energy agnostic because of his background. I think he doesn't mind where it comes from, so long as it's cheap and so long as industry can use it to actually make the country a better place. And I'd say for the time being, until the technology does change, that's probably not a bad approach for, for governments and for business to pursue. Yeah, we're going to need uh, all sources of energy for the foreseeable future. That. Uh... That fast charging investment is a big one too, isn't it? Because as we go to electric cars, uh, you know, apart from pricing and, uh, and uh, range, one of the key things is just being able to charge them quickly. And if you can charge a car in 20 minutes, well, there's not much difference to having a petrol car, right? They, they've got one there. You can charge it in 10 minutes with the wow. big one, the super one. That's the reason why that particular business has just won the best electric vehicle charging award in the world. Great stuff. Thanks for joining us, Ross. Have a good weekend. Good stuff. Ross Greenwood, he'll be back on Sunday morning, Business Weekend, 11 o'clock Sunday. Ross Greenwood brings that with you. Have that full Kevin St Baker story.